So I recently logged onto Twitter and was excited to see this tweet from Elon Musk congratulating the Tesla team for the first Cybertruck built at Giga Texas. Now this is huge because this is very different from what we've seen in the past. See, in the past, we've seen several Cybertruck uh, videos of Cybertrucks driving around California, but those were prototypes, uh, most likely you know, built from different facilities. However, this is the first manufactured Cybertruck coming from the Gigafactory uh, facility. Now, in January of 2020 was when we first saw the Model Y get manufactured from its finalized production line, and then we started seeing deliveries happening as soon as two months later in March of 20. 2020 as well, which was fairly quickly. So if Tesla's holding the same cadence as it's had in the past, then we could possibly see the Cybertrucks being delivered as soon as September. But we also have to remember that the Cybertruck has a very unique exoskeleton design. And so it's possible that because of you know the multiple single castings that's used to make this product, that we could see some slight variants from previous models as far as deliveries. Now, what makes the Cybertruck exciting is the fact that we've heard from automotive engineers like Sandy Monroe state that the combining of the body with the platform and the lack of paint should result in a significant reduction in capital expenditure to bring the vehicle to production. But along with that, in previous videos, I've highlighted how new truck sales you know, outperform new passenger car sales by almost three to one. In fact, I have this chart here that you guys could clearly see, and it's actually pulled up directly from the Bureau of uh, Transportation uh, statistics. And so with the Cybertruck being able to have the possibility of boosting profit margins for its design, and along with, you know, trucks being one of the most popular vehicles amongst Americans, well, this could be huge for the bottom line of Tesla. Now, I want to point out the fact that Sawyer Merritt highlighted the fact that this tweet from Tesla announcing the first Cybertruck built at Giga Texas, you know, exceeded over 3 million views or impressions for this tweet, which is one of the most viewed tweets in Tesla's history. So this kind of shows you guys the excitement that's behind the Cybertruck and its uh, you know, production actually beginning. But along with this great news, we also have a catalyst event coming around the corner where we're going to get a update on Tesla's fundamentals once we have the earnings come out on Wednesday, July 19th, after the close. Now, I also want to highlight the fact that the S&P 500 has rallied pretty much after each of the last four earnings seasons. So the main question is, is the market going to rally once more again after we have this huge wave of earnings with some of the notable ones being Tesla? But with that said, guys, I want to go ahead and hop into my laptop and kind of discuss a few more things in further detail when it comes to looking at Tesla. Alrighty, so we are officially in my laptop. Now, the first thing I want to touch on is the fact that, yes, you know, the Cybertruck uh, being produced and manufactured in the Gigafactory uh, for Texas it is good, right? It's bullish news, but we have to remember that's going to be bullish news in the short term, right? It's not like it's going to show up on, you know, the Q2 earnings because, of course, uh, that it's not going to show up there. Now, we most likely are going to hear about it in uh, Q2's earnings, uh, most likely in forward guidance. We're probably going to hear Elon Musk or the CFO, uh, Zachary uh, Kirkhorn, mention how, hey, you know, uh, Profit margins may have dipped for this quarter because of price cuts, but because of the Cybertruck coming up in its production line, they're anticipating margins to actually boost up in the future. That's probably the only thing we'll really hear on the Cybertruck. And the real news we want to really pay attention to is, of course, what actually happened with uh, profit margins. We want to pay attention to free cash flow and a couple of other things that are going to show up on the earnings for Tesla. Now, real quickly, I want to highlight the fact that on my YouTube channel, uh, on the community post, I highlighted something. I mentioned that Zachary Kirkhorn, Tesla's chief financial officer, recently disclosed the sale of $3 million worth of Tesla shares prior to the company's earnings, right? I mentioned the dates in which he sold uh, with, you know, almost a little bit more than half a million on May 4th almost close to a million on June 5th, and then the next day on June 6th, uh, pretty much 1.6 million. Now, I mentioned that, in my opinion, this was most likely pre-planned selling. I don't think it was him being concerned of a bad earnings and trying to offload some shares. And I mentioned that, you know, with the earnings being a week away from today, um, when I made this post, what do you guys think of Tesla's um, earnings? Is Tesla gonna beat? And, you know, the overall consensus for subscribers on the channel was that Tesla was going to uh, beat earnings by 81%. It was either yes, 
nope, they're going to underperform or IDK with a photo of my cat <laughs> with a little Easter bunny hat. Um, but, you know, the overall consensus was that, yeah, Tesla was going to beat earnings, which, of course, isn't indicative of much. But I, I always like to get a pulse on what you guys think as well. Um, but also, when you, like, kind of parse through a, a bunch of websites online, we see that many analysts are actually expecting Tesla to still beat its earnings um, as well, which is actually quite surprising because, you know, one of the main concerns was, hey, you know, obviously deliveries came in good because they cut their prices. Well, this is going to hurt profit margins. But again, I always said that this was pretty good for Tesla because at the end of the day, you know, Tesla has that pricing power ability where they could go ahead and cut prices, you know, and still remain profitable to, you know, obviously stir up demand in the cyclical uh, bear market where obviously interest rates are extremely high and trying to finance a new vehicle is, you know, pretty much almost unaffordable. And so, you know, this was a strategic thing that Tesla had to do. And I think that, yeah, it may hurt profit margins in the short term. But again, with the, you know, out, you know, the rolling out of the cyber trucks, this is really going to help out Tesla probably in the second half of um, 2024 when we actually start seeing the numbers really roll out. Now, you know, looking at Tesla from a technical aspect, um, it's very likely that we could possibly, you know, we could see Tesla reach back up to the $400 levels. And I know some individuals may say, hey, you know, that that's just crazy, Justin, you know, and now you're just talking crazy. Well, here's something I want to mention, right? So looking at things, you know, switching over to a fundamental uh, or actually, I'm sorry, a technical approach, right? We already covered a few other things, right? Other data points, but switching over from, you know, to a technical perspective, one of the things I've highlighted a lot of times on the channel is looking at the volume profile which is volume relative to price which is different from you know volume relative to time and we see that we already passed this area around like the you know 190s where there's a lot of volume by price and that's where we see kind of tesla kind of consolidate move sideways and we're already at this area where there's low volume by price and when there's low volume by price that's where we see big movements why well because there's not too much of a battle between the bid and the ask and i say this often because it's important to know this right when there's low volume volume relative to price and there's you know a lot of buying pressure well that's going to push the order books up and the same goes in the inverse when there's a lot of selling pressure right and there's low volume by price what's well, going to push the order books down right and we see that you know it came down heavily over here but then over here when there's lots of uh volume relative to price we kind of see things move sideways but as we broke downwards again when there's little volume to price um and there's selling pressure we fall down fast and when we reverse we actually reverse just as fast as well and so we're at this area over here where if we have a good earnings report well this could honestly push us over to like uh pretty much the i i'd say like the mid 300s but going into december where we really see tesla kind of ramp up on on um deliveries we could see again there is a reduction in volume relative to price and we could see tesla by the end of the year reach up to 400 dollars um per share now again this is just you know an estimate of course you know we can't just base our, our trades and our investments uh based on just only looking at technical analysis because at the end of the day you know stocks don't add hat you know they don't have to adhere to whatever you see on the charts you know you could see you could draw as many trend lines as you want but you know the stock market doesn't adhere to the squiggly lines you draw and so this is just one data point but combining that with alternative data showing us that you know teslas are the most searched you know electric vehicles along with the fact that you know fundamentals are pretty strong well we could possibly see tesla finally rebound now again you know we've also seen and highlighted other you know economic data points in recent videos on my channel talking about the cpi report and the ppi report showing us that inflation has cooled off although one of the main concerns going into 2024 is that you know the interest rates that we've seen the federal reserve hike by right we still have only really felt 30 percent of the rate hikes and we still have a lot more to go and so that's one of the main concerns going forward right because the economy although things look good in the short term everything's kind of bullish well we have to wait and see what actually happens when the economy really starts to feel the interest rates that were um done in 2022 right it takes some time it's not like the federal reserve uh you know hikes rates and we feel it immediately tomorrow right it, it takes on average about a year and so we still have 70 percent of the interest rates that have been hiked up 
to really start coming into the market. And so that's one of my biggest concerns for Tesla. So, you know, I'm still bullish on the long term, right? Because obviously, you know, when you just look at the pure fundamentals for Tesla, it makes sense, right? But in the short term, I'm bullish. In the medium term, well, we'll have to really, you know, evaluate and, and stay really data dependent, right? At the end of the day, I don't have a crystal ball. And there's several different variables that we absolutely want to pay attention to. Right now, things are looking good. But we want to really pay attention to how the economy is doing pretty much going into 2024 when we really start feeling the pressure of the rate hikes. So, you know, we'll definitely keep you guys updated on that. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Make sure to check out the links in the description below because one of the links is going to be a link to the Push and Profit private group where every single day I highlight, you know, my trade ideas and my overarching views on the market. So definitely take a look into that. And with that being said, guys, make sure to watch this next video right over here. And I'll see you guys on that next video. Take care, guys.